between 2013 and 14, um, I started, I mean, really dirtying my hands with, with hydroponics uh, technical solutions that had to work in, in very peculiar, in very challenging uh, conditions. It is also during that period that I started um, realizing that um, hydroponics could be easily optimized and um, and um, at, and this was going in parallel with a with a passion that I always had about technology and about coding. So that's when I realized. I mean, that was the period where um, the Arduino platform, the Raspberry platform. I mean, this open source technology. Uh, I mean, technology hardware platforms and uh, and software platforms also boomed. And uh, of course, I came to know about it and I started studying during nights. A night, and uh, I started then prototyping my first automatic, automized uh, vegetable gardens. And I mean, little by little, I tried always. I I was always trying to figure how this, let's say, high tech solution could be then transferred to to low tech solution and uh, to, to 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 support uh, agricultural production. I realized how it is important to develop, uh, for example, solutions that can work on the cloud, uh, not on the cloud, like on local. And there is really, uh, I mean, agriculture is a very diverse context. And I think that every solution needs its own adapted, every situation, sorry, needs its own adapted solution. So after um, developing uh, a few of these hydroponics um, display projects, um, eventually um, a couple of privates, in Djibouti, picked up on the idea, and this was actually the purpose of the project, as often FAO does, like uh, it shows the FAO, what, the, what usually does in agreement with the government, they, they show and display um, a technology that can be promising for the country with the hope that then late, I mean, to show the feasibility so that um, possibly later uh, some somebody in the private sector or the government would, would pick up on that technology. In this case, it was a little bit different because a couple of um, private actors from the private sectors actually um, they wanted to 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 invest. I mean, to to understand better about how hydroponics worked and uh, and how this could be done in in, in Djibouti, which is um, as we said a challenging country, but not only because um, water fresh water is not available, but also because it is a country which imports most of its food. Uh, either from Ethiopia or directly from Europe through airplane transportation, and uh, uh, but also it is a country that doesn't produce electricity. It has to import it from from Ethiopia or produce it locally from from diesel, which, which is very expensive. Um, so at the beginning, I was a little bit against the idea of producing hydroponics all year round because I thought that I mean I mean you know there are a lot of calculations and implied but let's say that um at the beginning i said that the only thing we tested at that time was uh, hydroponics during the cooler period and under net houses but not not fully indoor and then studying studying and researching we realized that maybe we could have done something if we went for a vertical solution stacking more layers one into another inside a, inside a completely indoor environment and also the fact that they had already an, a running activity producing ice for, for the consumers. Um, this was something that I started considering as a possibility to low down costs for, for keeping the uh, environment inside the indoor farming. So um, I started helping them out uh, during weekends and again at night, studying and see how we could do. Uh, we tried also to, um, let's say to, 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 to refer to, um, how do you say, service providers, for example, in Dubai or in the United States or Europe, maybe, uh, to see if uh, some already like ready to go solution could be feasible. But then we realized that because of the cost or the, because of the investment cost and also what was the, I mean, the, the, the market that we were targeting, it would have been very difficult for, for the business plan to work. So this is how eventually we decided to go for a completely custom design. And it took my free time busy because I can imagine like to, 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 I mean, every screw, every, every 
every part of the structure. I I started designing everything, and uh, of course studying a lot and uh, looking for a lot of documentation. And we did also some testing. So we went through different phases. Like we went through a first phase where we first we 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 wanted to test the feasibility of the of the productive part, let's say, and also to identify what would be the probably best genetic, I mean, the seeds, I mean, which which variety would work best at, at those climates. What we're talking about is that even if it is a controlled environment, we can't go lower than 25, 26 degrees centigrade. Like we cannot go down to 24 or 21. It would be unfeasible from an economic point of view. So we keep producing between 26 and 28. We're talking about out external temperature of about 40, 45, sometimes 48 degrees. And uh, at, in those conditions, keeping like temperature lower about two degrees, it has a huge impact uh, on the bill. Uh, of course, the research for the proper um, lead lightning solution, it took some time. We, we tested several. And let's say that in about a year and a half, we, we, we had an idea about how to go for, for a larger test. We had to go. Uh, it took another year and a half to have a fully operational, um, a fully, let's say, mm, the scaled up commercial um, operation. This one around um, 60 square meters.